And what is up guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Hash Altcoin Black Miner F1 Plus, the latest effort coming out from Hash Altcoin. It does differ from the F1 a little bit in that it does have a push-pull fan configuration. We see there are two fans now on the front and back. It's also noticeably heavier. I didn't have a sensitive enough scale to really weigh it, but I, I just feeling it, uh, it's definitely heavier. And the ASIC housing itself appears to be quite a bit larger. You can also see that there are clearly three hashing boards on here. Each appears to have six uh, FPGA chips mounted onto the board. And I am hearing from Hash Altcoin that they did make some improvements to the heat sink itself so you may expect lower temperatures. To get set up and operating on the Hash Altcoin Black Miner F1, it's going to be very, very similar to any other ASIC or the F1 itself. You're going to want to connect these, these six pin power connectors to the hash boards, each one getting two and one power connector to the control board on the top. You'll go ahead and connect your Ethernet to get internet connectivity and go ahead and fire it up. Log into your router wherever you are and find out what the IP address of the Black Miner F1 Plus is. Go ahead and type that into a browser and that's going to prompt you for a login and password. My default username and password is going to be root, R-O-O-T, and root. Once you log in, here's the standard Black Miner uh, ASIC style interface that you're going to use to control the Black Miner F1 Plus. This is where you're going to make your configuration changes, change the frequency, uh, and also update the bit streams from Black Miner's website. Now we have a future video coming out where we go into detail how to update and replace bit streams on the Black Miner F1, F1 Plus, or any of the other models. Uh, stay tuned for that video coming out in the near future. Configuration really is a cinch via the drop down menu. You just drop down whatever algorithm uh, that you want to be hashing on and you put in your details. It, identical to ASIC configuration. So if you've ever dealt with an ASIC before, you know how easy that is. You're up and operating on a black miner, any model within a few minutes. There's no advanced configuration. There's no advanced uh, sort of knowledge required. All you need to know is what you want to mine. You need to get the configuration string from the pool, put that into the fields and you're off to the races. After giving it some time to ramp up, it looks like we're pulling just under 10 amps. This is at full load and I'm here at my home on 120. I'm getting just under 10 amps and just over a thousand watts. So you're gonna wanna be very mindful of where you're running this device because it has three boards it's going to be pulling more power and uh, if you're like me and on a 15 amp circuit or even a 10 amp circuit in your residential area then this might be the only device you're able to run in that room or at least on that circuit as far as noise goes compared to the black miner f1 about the same it is a little bit louder you, this is a uh, quiet uh, pillar style fan uh, getting 60 70 pushing 80 uh, taking a test here off the kitty the kitty is getting around the same amount ambient taking a look here on the black miner f1 plus uh, well into the 80s and taking a look here this is just the f1 a little bit quieter you can test it you can uh, judging based against the server power supply it is almost just as loud so not quite as loud as uh, some traditional asics that we've taken a look at it in the past i would compare the noise level on the black miner f1 plus to that of a z9 mini at full bore but for our first test, we're going to go head to head on Zen Protocol. This is the coin that I've been mining pretty much the whole time on my F1. Uh, we're going to go through and make our configuration changes, and we're also going to test the hash rate at the pool. We're going to be using the same address uh, that I've been using, and we're going to just take the combined result. After giving a few minutes to settle out, you can see here that the Black Miner F1 Plus is settling out around 40 giga hash per second. That's almost double what I'm getting on my regular F1. I explain this because some of my ASIC chips are reading the X. I haven't investigated further into that matter or adjusted the frequency to compensate and remedy that on my regular F1 uh, because I'm still at around the 19 to 20 giga hash per second mark on my F1. So with the F1 Plus, all the ASIC chips are reading O's and so that's good for me. They're all functional, all happy, and we're getting close to double the hash rate of the F1. Your results may vary. For our next test, we're going to take a look at Tribus. Uh, for Tribus, we're not going to use Denarius. We're going to use Scriv over on Blue Screen of Death Pool. We're going to just populate in the uh, the default miner address, and we're going to take a sample address that we just pulled randomly off the internet, just because we're trying to get some hash rate results on a head-to-head. -head. And again, it's very easy to configure the Black Miner or the Black Miner F1, F1 Plus. Uh, you just drop down what algorithm you want to hash on and fill in your details. Going over to the pool, we're going to paste our address in and give it a little bit of time to ramp up. 
a regular F1, we're getting about 2.8, ju just under three giga hash per second on, on Tribus. And then on our F1 Plus, getting about 4.6 or about 50% more. For our final test, we're gonna be taking a look at OX Bitcoin. This has been a popular benchmark for FPGAs thus far. In our regular F1 with two hash boards, we expect to hit about 20 something giga hash per second. And we should be hitting around 30 something over on our F1 Plus, expecting about a 50% increase. Taking a look at some of the more popular algorithms here, the F1 versus the F1 Plus, I did OX, Tribus, and Zen Protocol. Now your mileage may vary, and I didn't give it a whole lot of time to settle out, but at peak I was getting almost double the hash rate on the F1 Plus, on Zen, and Tribus. OX was coming in right where it should have. Going based off the charts on Hash Altcoin's website, the expected hash rates on some of the other popular algorithms like Lyra 2Z, Phi2, Nexus, and Skeen are about 50 to up to 75 percent of what you get on the f1 now this again is only with one additional board 50 percent more boards 50 percent more hash power and power consumption but you're getting increased performance as we all know with mining hardware differs just a little bit so again take this with a grain of salt your mileage may vary but at minimum you should expect at least 50 percent increase so those are my initial impressions of the Hash Altcoin Black Miner F1 Plus. I've gone on and on about how much I really like Black Miner, what they're doing, because uh, uh, for the longest time I've been saying that FPGA mining, if it wants to get off the ground, it needs to make itself easy for average people to get in on. Um, a lot of people consider the configuration required for a VCU or BCU to be easy, which it is if you know what you're doing and you have some understanding of the fundamentals. The Black Miner F1 really doesn't require that as much. It is so easy a complete noob to mining could do it and whether you think that's good or bad I think it's great because it invites more people in to what I see as a secret weapon against the ASIC fight you might have an opinion on this and if you do I'd love to hear it so let me know in the comments below what you think about it additionally I think it was a tremendously smart move on hash altcoins part to offer a single board model of their miner for $1,200 this lowers the entry point for a lot of people who couldn't just justify a $2,500 piece of equipment, but perhaps could on a $1,200 piece of equipment just to get their foot in the door. I think this is a great idea. Now they're offering uh, FPGA miners at uh, varying price points, $1,200, $2,500, and this Black Miner F1 just under $4,000, around $3,800. You will have to pay shipping and perhaps customs is an issue in there as well. You can also explore hosted options over on Hash Altcoin's website. Links in the description below if you'd like to buy a miner and just have them run it, uh, you pay the electricity, and then you receive the proceeds of funds. Me personally, I like having the hardware in hand, but that's up to you if, uh, on how you want to do it. Stay tuned for future videos where we're going to run through some other algorithms on the F1 and the F1 Plus. Uh, I think Hash Altcoin showing a lot of potential. They're adding new bit streams. Uh, it's easy to get in. Sure, you may not have the same flexibility. May, you're going to have to get your bit streams from Hash Altcoin. I know that's a common criticism, but right now everything's looking great. I really like what Hash Altcoin's doing. If you're interested in grabbing a Hash Altcoin Black Miner F1, F1 Plus, or the single board model, links to it are in the description below. I received no commission or anything off of that, uh, but do your own research first and decide if it's right for you. If you'd like to discuss FPGA mining, be sure to head over into our Discord. We have a channel called FPGA Discussion. Type discord.thetechnicals.io into your browser, takes you straight into our Discord, or just click the link in the description below. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.